welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, I noticed this weekend that my most popular video on the channel was my unboxing from King Koi Goldfish when I got my first Ron shoe. So I decided that I decided to go back and watch that video and it was kind of cringy. Um, <laughs> I was still somewhat new to filming and I didn't have a really good camera and it just wasn't that great. So I'm kind of redoing that because I really want to give you guys a correct outlook of King Koi and Goldfish. So in case you don't know, King Koi and Goldfish is located in California and they are a family owned business owned by husband and wife, Richard and Lauren, and they are super, super sweet. And I absolutely love talking to them whenever I can. King Koi and Goldfish has not been up and running very long. I believe they are under two years of operation right now, but I could be wrong. Um, they have absolutely gorgeous fish and they're not super expensive. If you can't afford a big fish, which is what everyone seems to want sometimes, they want a pretty big goldfish that they don't have to groom and then grooming has pretty much already been done for them. The thing that happens with that is they're a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> And that's expensive. And not only does King Koi and Goldfish carry those, but they also carry small goldfish that you have to groom yourself. And that's something that I really like about them because to me, grooming is part of the fun. So in May of 2017, I was on the lookout for some butterfly telescopes. I had actually never ordered any type of fish off the internet. So I was a little nervous about doing that. So I kind of just looked around my state to see if anybody anywhere had butterfly telescopes. And guess what? There was none. Reason being is Kentucky is not known for goldfish. <laughs> um, if you go to a pet store here, you're gonna find fantails, uh, commons. You might get lucky and find arandas and ryukins but you're not gonna find a butterfly telescope. And mostly every time that I asked the owners of these stores if they knew where I could get some, they didn't even know that butterfly telescopes existed. So <laughs> that was the end of that as far as getting something here in Kentucky because it just wasn't gonna happen. So I was on my Instagram and I found King Koi Goldfish. I'd been following them for a while but it just so happened that the day that I was looking, they posted some of their Calico Butterfly Telescopes. And I was like, man, those are really nice. So I ended up messaging them and I got a response from Lauren and she informed me that they were actually running a sale at that time. If you buy two, you get one free. So I was like, that's, that's great, that's what I want. So I told her kind of what I was looking for as far as um, what they looked like, the color variety that I was interested in, and she she got in the and she got in the aquariums there and picked out what she thought was some of the best um, that she had available, and she sent me videos of them, and I ended up picking out a calico, a red and black, and a red and white butterfly telescope, and that was my three. Not only were these fish cheap to me but they were still young enough to for me to groom them into what I thought was their full potential and so in May of 2017 I got my first ever butterfly telescopes and I got them from King Koi and Goldfish. I was a nervous wreck when they sent me the tracking number. They were being sent overnight from California to Kentucky and I was an absolute mess. Um, I was pretty much up all night trying to see where these fish were and how close they were to me. I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> um, I had never had fish shipped to me. I had no idea what to expect. I was, I was hoping <laughs> that uh, the bag didn't break. The only thing I could keep, the only thing that I kept thinking about was my luck is terrible. The bags are gonna break. There's gonna be no water in the bag. The fish are gonna die. What if they get lost in transit? That's the only thing that I thought of that whole night and the morning that they got here. Um, about 10 a.m., uh, the goldfish arrived and I was ecstatic to finally have the box in my hands. When I got them here, 
Um, I immediately tore the box open and just wanted to see if the fish were swimming. And they were. They were fine. None of them were even stressed. So it was fine. I was good at that point. So I let them acclimate in the tank they were going in and then I set them free and I stared at them for like two weeks because I loved these fish. I had never had butterfly telescopes and I can honestly say that today, you know, almost a year later, they might be one of my favorite breeds. So just to give you some background, this is what the goldfish looked like when I got them and this is what they look like now. As you can see, they have made a ton of progress and some of them don't even look like the same fish. Jojo was the red and black butterfly telescope and now she's all red, but she is gorgeous and has the prettiest tail of them all. Cleo was one of the more stressed out of the bunch when I got her, but she was gorgeous and she was so little and so cute. Now she's one of the biggest and still growing, not to mention her colors are gorgeous and vibrant. Queenie was my little red and white butterfly telescope and she is a rut. She is growing but not as fast as other ones and that really doesn't bother me. She's cute and I love her just the same. So the goldfish did great um, up until September of last year, I believe it was mid-September. Um, I started noticing that Jojo was starting to act differently. She was bottom sitting. She wasn't eating as much as she used to. And then during a water change, I happened to pick her up and take a look at her from, from a top view perspective. And what I found alarmed me. It was one thing that a goldfish keeper never wants to see, and that was raised scales. Jojo had dropsy. So immediately, I brought in my 30 gallon storage container and filled it up with water in my fish room. I put her in with a sponge filter and then tried to figure out what I was going to do. So usually dropsy is fatal and I knew that. I was well aware of what could potentially happen to Jojo, but I wasn't going to let it happen if I could help it. I started posting on the goldfish community forum, what am I supposed to do with this fish? How am I going to help her? She was swollen ridiculously. Her scales were pine coning. At that point, it wasn't a true pine cone, but they were starting to lift and I was starting to notice it very quickly with the swelling. I assumed that there was organ failure. After I posted and I shared the news on my Instagram as well because a lot of the followers like to see what's really happening with me. I don't like to be the type of person that hides what really happens to their fish because it could help somebody else. And turns out Jojo helped a lot of other fish keepers that had a fish with dropsy. Richard from King Coin Goldfish saw what had happened to Jojo. And mind you, this was several months after I had had these fish. He knew that I was heartbroken and I really had no idea what I was supposed to do with this fish. People, other people were telling me to put her down. She was just gonna pass away. There wasn't a point in letting her suffer. But I couldn't do that because I really thought Jojo had a fighting chance. Richard reached out to me and told me that if I could get Canaplex, that she might have a fighting chance. So I asked him about Canaplex. How would that help her? The problem with dropsy is a number of things could cause dropsy. And the problem with treating it is you have to know what's causing it to treat it correctly. Otherwise, you're just shooting blanks. So, we determined that it was likely bacterial dropsy. Um, we sent messages back and forth. I sent him videos and pictures of her. And we determined it was likely bacterial dropsy and that I needed Canaplex. The problem is, all of my pet stores in my area did not carry Canaplex. They didn't even know what it was. So there was no chance that I was going to get this here but I needed it now. So with his help, we found a way to get Canaplex to me via Amazon Prime. Got it the next day, which happened to be a Saturday. As soon as I got it, I was treating her. 
I was doing exactly what the, the medication had said to do. I followed the directions to a T. I was doing water changes. Sometimes I was staying in here at night just to be with her because I was afraid that she was going to pass away on me and I didn't want her to do it alone and that sounds silly but she and I had really developed a bond during that time that she was ill. Not only that but my grandmother had named this fish and my grandmother had pretty much claimed this fish as hers and I didn't want to let her down because she really believed in me as a fish keeper. She thought if something was wrong with these fish that I could fix it no matter what was wrong with them. Now she didn't understand exactly what dropsy was. I tried to explain it to her uh, the best that I knew how but all she said was that I could fix this fish. So uh, a lot of stress was put on me during that time but thankfully with Richard's help Jojo made it and Jojo is thriving now. Even though dropsy is considered fatal for goldfish, she fought and I fought with her and she's still here. A couple months after that I got another aquarium and I'd really been wanting some raunchy. I noticed that King Koi and Goldfish was having a sale on all their fish and they had a, a promo code that you could get I think 20% off any fish. So I've been really wanting some raunchy. So I talked to Lauren again and she was able to set up a online consultation with me so that I could FaceTime one of the employees and I could pick my own fish. Which is what we really like to do because I don't know about you guys but I like to see the fish that I'm going to get. I like to pick it as if I was there even though I can't be in California. <laughs> that is scheduling error and we are obviously in different time zones. I had to be able to pick my fish before a certain time in the evening before I went to work and it was still morning there and they really hadn't even opened yet. But she was able to get one of her employees to come in early so that I could pick my own fish. So when I did that I got, I can't remember his name either and I'm so sorry, you know who you are. Um, but he was a guy and he was super super nice. and. He helped me pick out my sweet little Eloise, my Calico Grantu, and she is adorable and she is getting so chubby. I got her in, let's see, I got her at the end of October and she was gorgeous. She was just a baby and here's some of her before and after pictures. So she came in the mail perfectly. She wasn't stressed. Um, there was no trouble with shipping in any way um, and she did great and she's still absolutely gorgeous to me. She has really grown into her calico base. She has a blue base and that's what you want to see with calicos. She doesn't have the perfect back um, but it, it's not the perfect curved back but I picked her for this reason because Everybody tends to want perfect fish and I wasn't looking for perfect fish. I was looking for a raunchu that I just liked and she was that one. And now she's in a tank with two other raunchu which I'm getting ready to talk about here shortly. So in December, um, the first of December, um, my life changed forever. Uh, I had been a caregiver to my grandfather for many years he had been sick a long time and he had helped raise me from a baby. He suffered from kidney failure and was on dialysis for quite some time. In November he got very very sick and by the first week of December we were in the hospital. Me being a nursing student I knew that something was wrong with him and I assumed that he had went into respiratory acidosis and my suspicions were confirmed. They put him on a uh, BiPAP and I assumed that he actually seemed to get better and then within two days of me saying that he seemed to get better, he was sent to hospice and he died several hours later. I was completely heartbroken over that. And he and my grandmother had spent a lot of money on my fish keeping hobby. They helped me whenever I needed it and he loved these fish. He helped me with my very first fish, Johnny, that lived 14 years. He loved Johnny. 
And when I decided that I was going to get goldfish again, he got super excited. But anyway, when he passed away, I took a break from Instagram and people started to wonder where I was. I posted and kind of let them know that I was taking a little bit of a break that, you know, my grandpa had passed away. So that same day, I got a, I got a message from Lauren at King Koi. She just sent me that she was so sorry that she had lost her grandfather as well um, and it was really hard and she was the first person that had ever really said anything to me about my grandfather. A week later um, my mom went and got the mail and there was something in the mail for me and it was a card from King Koi Goldfish and I still have it and it's still gonna be it's and it's in the fish room and it will always be in the fish room because it means so much to me. Um, she sent me a handwritten letter there um, from King Koi and all the staff that it was a sympathy card and they were thinking of me and praying for me and um, that was the only card that I got from anybody and it was really special to me and I'll always keep it. And so I got in a conversation with Lauren and she was always there for me when I needed somebody to listen that wasn't my family. So after the sad story, um, one thing I forgot to mention, and this is kind of out of sync, but before my grandfather passed away, Alyssa, my good friend from Tennessee, she got, she messaged me about rehoming some raunchu. She had an East Coast raunchu and a King Koi goldfish raunchu that she needed to rehome as she was downsizing an aquarium and she really didn't have the room to keep them anymore so of course I was like yeah send them on <laughs> so this was not long after I got Eloise this was just a couple weeks between getting Eloise and getting these fish so as I said one of these fish was from King Coin Goldfish his name is King Chubbs um, I named him that I'm not sure what her name for him was but he is a male and he is adorable everybody that I know that comes to this house and looks at all these fish, he's always the favorite. Always, because he's got the cutest face. So this is King Chubbs. I really don't have a before and after of him just when I got him to now. So, I mean, I don't really know what he looked like when she got him, but this was him. So as you can see, he's super chubby and really cute. And um, he's in my living room and he's in the raunchy tank. They're all together. And the reason that I even put that tank in the living room and I changed these two was because everybody wanted to see him and my parents just loved to look at him. So I just put him front and center. So he's kind of the first aquarium that uh, anybody that comes into my house sees. So that's kind of, he's just, He's just one of a kind. He's just adorable. So that's kind of my overview of King Koi and Goldfish. Um, I know that everybody has their own opinion and their own um, experience with any business, no matter what it is. But King Koi and Goldfish will always have a special place in my heart. And I will always buy from them, no matter if it's fish or dry goods or whatever it may be. Um, they have really became family to me and um, I'll never forget what they've done for me and how they've helped me in my fish keeping career as well as in my personal life. So this was just kind of the overview of them. If you guys are thinking about getting any type of goldfish or koi, and I think now they have betas, they have really nice affordable fish. So check them out. I'll leave the link in the description below and I'll see y'all next time.